Now in this lesson on Pythagoras theorem, we are going to be looking at finding the hypotenuse. Now Pythagoras theorem is that in any right angled triangle, and there's an example of a right angled triangle, the square of the hypotenuse equals the sum of the squares of the two smaller sides. Now that word hypotenuse, okay, indicates the longest side in a right angled triangle. And if we consider where the right angle is, the hypotenuse is always directly opposite that. Now let's consider this right angle triangle. We'll label the hypotenuse as C and the two smaller sides, A and B. And Pythagoras theorem states that C squared equals A squared plus B squared. Excellent. Let's look at some examples now. We're asked to find X. Now we can see that X is the longer side in this right angle triangle, it's the hypotenuse. So we start by saying X squared equals, and the two shorter sides are 4 and 3. So we write that it equals 4 squared plus 3 squared. Now X squared equals, write that down, 4 squared plus 3 squared. Well 4 squared is 16, 3 squared is 9. So adding the two together we get 25. Our next line, x squared equals 25. Have a think of that. What number squared makes 25? Well, you may already know it's 5. And if, if so, you can write the answer. Otherwise, what we do is take the square root, if we're not sure. We take the square root, x equals a square of 25. And as we said, ends up being that x equals 5. Terrific. A second example, we're asked to find m. Again, we have a right angle triangle, and M is the longest side, okay? It's known as the hypotenuse. So we start with that, M squared equals the two shorter sides, 5 and 12. So we write 5 squared plus 12 squared. Okay, it doesn't matter what order we write that. We could have written 12 squared plus 5 squared. There's no problems with that. So M squared equals, now 5 squared plus 12 squared. Well, 5 squared is 25. 12 squared is 144. So if we add the two together, we get 169. Now as before, we have m squared equals 169. The opposite of squaring is to take the square root. So if we do that, we get that m equals the square root of 169, and that works out to be that m equals 13. We'll do some further examples. We're asked to find x, this time correct to one decimal place. So there's our x, it's the hypotenuse, so we're starting with that. We write that x squared equals, and the two sides are 5 and 7. So we can write that it equals 7 squared plus 5 squared. So we have x squared equals, write that down. And on the calculator, 7 squared plus 5 squared works out to be 74. Now this stage, x squared equals 74, well, it's not going to be a whole number. All right, as in the previous lesson, we could generally do them in our head. We're going to need the calculator now. We'll take the square root, and we're doing that, x equals the square root of 74, and that works out to be that x equals 8.6. And we've rounded that off to one decimal place. Excellent. Our second example, we're asked to find M, but this time we leave our answer in third form. Okay, we'll have to get back what does third form mean. Let's see that. We'll start with M. It's the hypotenuse. It's the longest side. So we write M squared equals. The two shorter sides are marked there, so we're going to write 5 squared plus 3 squared. So M squared equals, write that down, and 5 squared plus 3 squared works out to be 34. Now again, at this step, if m squared equals 34 to find m, we need to take the square root. And we do that, we get m equals the square root of 34. Now the square root of 34 works out on the calculator to be this number. However, the question does ask us to leave the answer in third form. So in other words, where we've written the square root of 34, that is in fact third form. So we're going to leave our answer as such.